the space for about five years, um, working with um, content creators, really with our focus uh, and mission on helping anybody be a legendary creator. Uh, we have you know, 1.2 million creators right now using our tools and services, uh, both across the live and VOD uh, space, across platforms. Um, and as we sit across the creator economy, we're helping creators um, from a macro to a micro level connect and have meaningful conversations with audiences. Um, well, yeah. And uh, of course, you know, as part of that, obviously, we're helping creators monetize their streams, which is a big part of, of their business. Um, and, you know, so working with companies, you know, on uh, across categories, um, you know, CPG companies, gaming companies, and obviously, hopefully auto companies, awesome. um, we are working to connect brands in a meaningful way with the Gen Z and millennial audience. So that's what we're up to. I love it. Sounds like you're the perfect fit to lead this conversation. Um, Sarah, welcome uh, to our, our virtual stage. We are thrilled to have you here today. Thank you very much for having me. I got to <laughs> turned on now, I think. I you think can you're hear there, me Sarah. Okay? Yeah, you're on. Good. Good to see you again. Perfect. Good to see you too, Drew. So um, I you know, just made a little introduction to uh, Stream Elements, but I think uh, most people want to hear uh, from you and what you're doing. So I'd love to uh, open it up to give uh, a little background info on yourself. Sure. So I, Sarah Brewer, I am working for the group within Ford Brand Content and Alliances. And I, don't, I think it's the fun department, if you will. We get to work <laughs> with lo lots of the partnerships. So we have at NFL, Derby, some of our other ones, um, some of our also maybe more cause related and community service type stuff too. And obviously one of the important areas in kind of entertainment, sports, et cetera, is gaming and esports. So that's my area of responsibility, one of my areas of responsibility. Uh, we also work with ambassador marketing. So it's kind of influencer, but with products, vehicles in our case, and working within gaming and across all of our things to kind of measure the impact of some of the intangible, right? We're kind of in that space where it's a little bit less um direct or clear but right. measuring that impact and getting that nice and um what was your background before getting into the yeah, gaming so, and esports world <laughs> uh drew and i were getting to know each other and <laughs> a few years ago i took my career on a big left turn uh, my background is mechanical engineering a while back and i did that for a while in automotive and decided i'd like to do something a little bit different i was kind of interested in marketing but not 100% sure that's what I wanted to do. I went back and did an MBA and pretty much every class in marketing that I took, I loved it, et cetera. Um, post, I did an internship in marketing and post MBA, I joined Ford through a marketing program. And I've been at Ford for a little over two years. And I've been in this role for three or four months. Right. So. Yeah, that's what we were, we were talking about and catching up. And I think we both have similar experience uh, or, or I'd say tenure in the gaming and esports space, right? Uh, I've been, yep. you know, branded content for my career, which anyone wants to look at, can look at LinkedIn, how long that's been. I won't talk about that. <laughs> but in gaming content specifically, it's only been a couple of months. So, you know, I don't know about you. I, I, what did you think about, you know, making this jump and, and what you're finding in, in, in terms of this space? Yeah, so I am, it, I'm really excited to get to jump into this. Um, I, it's a newer space for me, even on the personal side, I did a little bit of video games, but I actually, as a kid, my mom wouldn't let us have video game consoles. And so now it's kind of a joke because I got to call my mom and say, jokes on you. I have a job in video games. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, but it, it's kind of just another area of marketing, right? You're still measuring brand awareness, your funnel metrics, scale, who your audience is, et cetera. So people might think, oh, I need to know gaming intimately, et cetera. And certainly as I get in it, I'm learning it. But I think if you were to change companies or industries or your area of marketing, I mean, if I went at Ford from marketing a Bronco to a Mustang, that would be a different cohort and different types of audiences and things that you're doing to reach them. So totally. it's, it's another area of marketing, right? Yeah, absolutely. And an exciting one. No, it's growing like crazy. Yeah. 
and I think my generation, I'm an older millennial, um, is very into gaming. And I think the generations coming up behind us are even more into it to the point that it's replacing other types of entertainment that they would engage with. Oh, for sure. We, that's what we were talking about. I mean, I, I've got two teenage boys who I've begged for years to come watch television with me and movies. And uh, it's impossible to get them away from watching their devices. And, you know, until I got into the space to see, you know, the creators and the influencers and how that's all working, I've now wished I pushed them even further, actually, into the gaming and esports world. So I'm, I'm happy that they're there. Um, in terms of your, you know, um, uh, obviously Ford has got a, a tremendous history in, in sponsorships, right, across traditional and yeah. traditional world. So, can you talk a little bit about, you know, where Ford sits now within the gaming and esports space? Yep. So, I think Ford initially kind of came in through the licensing area, obviously with vehicles like Mustangs and GTs, et cetera, part of that racing games and licensing, et cetera. But up and and there may have been a few dabbles into different events, but a couple of years ago, we recognized the growth of this space and the importance of it and started to put more significant resources and strategy behind that. And you're starting to see that strategy really finally come to life. It's been in the works for a couple of years and now the pieces are really starting to kind of come out the other side of that. Um, I, tell me where you'd like me to jump in a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, I was reading obviously doing due diligence on this in terms of your partnership um, with Rocket League right now, right? And so I don't know if that's been, was one of the first jumps or, or, or the biggest jump that, that Ford had made. A little bit of both. I would say it's one of the more strategic ones, right? Because that gets us out of just the racing space, but it's still a place that we fit. So you want to go, you don't want to force yourself in somewhere or kind of insert yourself without making it relevant. So one of our core pillars of our strategy is to add value to the gaming community, right? We don't want to show up somewhere and just force ourselves or be disruptive to their experience. We want to add to it. And Rocket League, first of all, there's vehicles in the game, but they're not just driving, they're playing soccer and they're doing different tricks, et cetera. Um, it's a really big player base and not the biggest out there. There's other bigger fish, but it was a pretty significant space. And again, you get out of that niche of just driving games and the players have been asking for a truck and they hadn't had a truck in the game before and we're America's top selling truck brand. So what a better fit than to go there and to bring something uniquely forward, right? We brought an F-150 into Rocket League. We added value because the fans have been asking for it. So um, that's, it, it yeah. had a lot of, it hit a lot of boxes for us. Yeah, and I think that's that's the really exciting part of, um, you know, what this, what this category and industry represents, right? Is that interaction between the creator and audience and then how does a brand get involved into it in a more natural way, um, but provides, much more interactivity um, through the space than a regular, you know, even traditional sponsorship can do, right? Where it's a more lean yep. back experience. And so I think, you know, that's an exciting partnership that, you know, provided audiences a chance to, you know, touch and feel Ford within, you know, a game itself. And I think you saw Ford maybe play a little bit looser than they have, right? So, so we have strict guidelines, making sure that the design of the vehicles is representing the key features, et cetera. However, anybody who's a Rocket League player knows a key component of this is boost, customization, et cetera. Right. So it's still a Rocket League truck. And I don't, if there was a number, I think how many different customizations there were of it, how many combinations were possible between all the skins and the boost and the lights, et cetera, right? So that yeah. was one of the key reasons that it also worked well is because we let it be customized, right? We let it live in Rocket League's environment. Yeah. Do you have, do you have to be careful though, in terms of balancing that, you know, how you want the brand to look and feel and then obviously, mm -hmm. but then give the audience something that they want. Yeah. So I'm not sure if people know this about automotive, but the vehicle design, et cetera, that was really important to keep some authentic elements. There may be some things that seem really small, but then once you see them, you can't unsee them. So the F-150 has kind of this dip on, on the door by the window, right? There's this dip down where the front windows are. 
And if you look, it's in the Rocket League chart because that's part of what makes an F-150 an F-150 from a design perspective. So our chief engineer and his team from the F-150 were engaged in collaborating with the designers at Psyonix to keep the DNA of this vehicle you know, balanced between it, it needs to be an F-150, be tough and live up to that. Right. But at the same time, it needs to be authentically Rocket League. That's great. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And obviously then, you know, in terms of how you um, position the brand and, 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 you know, with the, with the typical Ford customer and audience, like how, who are you gearing towards? Who are you targeting in, in that respect? Yep. So in general, gaming is a, a upper funnel kind of activity for us. It's targeting a little bit younger audience. I mean, still, more in the car buying age, right? But also building a relationship with those uh, younger generations who maybe haven't had exposure to Ford. Sometimes you come from a Ford family, right? My dad had a Ford, my mom had a Ford, we always had Fords. But if you don't come from a Ford family, maybe you haven't really been that exposed to the brand. So kind okay. of building that reputation early on and be a trusted partner, right? If they see that we play well with the brands that they engage with and they represent and they can hopefully grow to trust us there right and it's the average i think the average age across the whole industry for buying a new vehicle is like 53 years old or something and that's the whole auto industry just because of you know the higher price tags for newer vehicles that type of stuff so right. trying to work that down um with launch of maverick we're trying to play more in that space also right to yeah. fit in there so all of this kind of comes together and we also want to talk to them even though they're not in market yet maybe they're going to be in market right their parents are in market exactly yeah and i think you know, joe and nick was just talking about in the, in, in the last um session right they were talking about reaching that younger audience because eventually like you mentioned before right those kids mm -hmm. who are playing now that's going to be predominantly their medium as they grow up and the kids that are younger than them that's all they're going to know. And so this is, you know, certainly a space where marketers need to start connecting with, with consumers in a bigger way. Yeah. And I would say it's not just the playing though. The other piece is the streaming, right? So for me, that was maybe the, one of the surprising parts coming into the role is how much the streaming and the content creation out of gaming was. Totally. Yep. And that was part of Rocket League for, for us as people made a lot of un, unsolicited, they made content of themselves playing with the truck, right? So that was another way that things went, not just people playing with it in game. Right, it's the extension. You see that that's entertainment, yeah. as you said, for these people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we, you know, we, again, we look at that every day, right, at Stream Elements. We're really focused on helping creators, um, you know, drive their content, right, and connect with audiences and then obviously work with brands. So, you know, it's, it's how do you continue that conversation, not just on the platforms that they're on, whether that's live or VRD, but as again, I've referenced by you know, the last uh, panel, Joe and Nick, talking about how do you extend that to, to other areas, right? And right now that might be social, later on down the line, that obviously can extend to traditional linear and OTT channels and, and anywhere else. But the content part of it that creators and audiences are connecting with uh, is invaluable. Um, so actually, you know, again, doing some research, right, and, and looking at Ford uh, in this space, I noticed overseas, right, in Europe, and I know this isn't part of, of your role currently, you're working on just U.S., um, but overseas, you have a, a, a little bit of a different take, right, with the team Fordzilla on the esports side. Yeah, so Europe has led a little bit heavier into the esports as kind of one of their first steps. Um, we are interested in esports, but so far we're still kind of, we got to walk, crawl, or crawl, walk, run, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, like what was I going to say? So, so they've kind of building out this infrastructure with that. And the way we're kind of organized is we have a global team that centralizes the strategy, but it's up to each region, US, Europe, South America, et cetera to figure out what's the best play in their market, right? They might figure out that, hey, given you know what we have to play with and the channels that are popular here, we think the best way to go into it is esports for us, right? Right. And on the US side, esports is definitely an area that we have on our radar. We did do work with 
uh, sponsor, I mean, with Rocket League, part of the integration was esports. It was sponsoring a couple of uh, tournaments. And then as far as working with teams, we're, it's something we're evaluating right now. It's a matter of finding the right partner who we can add value to both of us, who's a genuine for us, it's also important to have like a genuine Ford enthusiasm, right? We don't right. want to just go in and do that. And then how can, again, how can we integrate and add value? And maybe that's a little bit harder to do with the content, but I think lifestyle and esports, we kind of have a rule, like no logo slapping, right? Or not just logo slapping. We always sure. want to do more than just put our logo somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I think, again, we've touched on it a little bit. I mean, this audience, the Gen Z millennial audience, I mean, it truly has to be authentic to, to their, how they're viewing it and how they're consuming content, right? And so I think you're right. That logo slapping probably is not is the experience they're trying to get away from. And so in this environment, right, you, you have to do something a little bit more immersive yeah. and a little bit more engaging. What um, the, the Ford uh, nameplates that you're working with in this space, right? Obviously, you mentioned the F-150, um, what, what are some of the others that are coming up and working other creators and, and, and esports teams that you might be looking at or partnerships? Sure. So, uh, I, there's not a whole, there's more to come. Stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> in, in general, I would say, you know, the iconic nameplates that we have, the iconic brands like Broncos, Mustangs, um, that an F-150 is kind of our key, we call them icons, but they are the more aspirational, inspirational vehicles, right? Those are the ones that people are kind of really excited about and want to get to. So yeah. those are the ones that tend to bring more value to our partners also, right? It's You wouldn't get the same draw for putting an Explorer in into the game. It wouldn't right. have the same marketing ad. So I would say our icons tends to be the focus. I mean, there's also more marketing um, focus on, on our side, right? So more focus in those areas, but certainly, I mean, we license a lot of different stuff for a lot of different games. We try to fit with the genre, right? There's even been talks of, you know, is there a game where a Transit Connect fits a van or something? Different ways to do that. So. Right. It's certainly not closed. We're open. We approach each opportunity and find out. And then there's also, it's not always the current vehicle. That tends to be the best from our perspective for marketing, right? But sometimes this might be a little bit more licensing, but retro Mustang is also really popular, right? Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, the, the nostalgia brands, right? That, yep. that resonate really well. Or and different they, and they models. Can bring back. Yep, yep, for sure. Um, in terms of your marketing, right, and, and, and how you activate, um, when you're looking at, you know, uh, planning for, you know, gaming and esports, how are you working with other departments across Ford Motor to, to figure out what the strategy is going forward? Yeah, so first and most important is kind of laddering up to the overall Ford strategy. So Within gaming, we do kind of do a little bit of Ford Halo brand and also the nameplate that we tend to play in, right? And it would also depend. Like if we do, if we were to do a team, I would say when we do game integrations, that's a little bit more focused on a nameplate or multiple nameplates. But if we're doing esports sponsorships or to do like an esports lifestyle team, that type of stuff, that would come more Halo brand and Ford overall and cross nameplate, right? Um, so it's kind of rolling up. How does that meet our overall marketing goals of audiences we're trying to reach? Where do we have gaps in our whole marketing portfolio of who we're reaching? Um, and then I would say once we kind of decided where to play, also working with each nameplate at Ford has their own kind of brand and marketing team. And we work with them to make sure that the vehicle and the brand is a fit with any kind of activation that we're gonna do and making sure the messaging is clear on both sides, right? Right. Um, we coordinate with our PR teams. We've got legal teams reviewing stuff. Um, there's, I mean, a whole bunch of the design right. teams we talked about, like. It's yeah. kind of fun for me because I have like the chief designer of the Bronco calling me and going, Sarah, 
we've got this, you know, Bronco and can we get it in a video game and which video game should it go in, et cetera. For me, that's Fun. kind of an exciting phone yeah. call to get. <laughs> that's amazing. And the designers um, get really excited about the video games. <laughs> yeah, oh, I bet. It's another platform for them to, you know, work their vehicles in, you know, yeah. uh, in, a, in a different way. Um, yeah. You know, actually, there's a, there's a question from, um, from, from the uh, audience um, in terms of what's going on right now in, in, in the, uh, you know, with the chip um, you know, shortage, right? And the crisis, um, you know, is there any, you know, modifications to short mid-term goals and how you measure success based on changes in consumer behavior? Or maybe they meant the crisis of what we just went through over the last year and a half. So there's two crises that I think, uh, you know, we're facing or coming out of. Yeah, I mean, COVID had its I'll talk about the past year and then I'll talk yeah. about the chip shortage. Okay. I think COVID had its bumps for Ford and maybe delayed some things kind of like many of us, but Ford has been very people from an employee perspective, very people first. I've been working from home since March of last year. And I think they're not even considering to let us back until at least October. Um, people who need to be in office, like if you're a clay modeler or you need to be hands-on parts, they're there and they have a bunch of safety procedures, very thorough. Um, so they've, they've found a way to work through all of that. And I think obviously we're still launching vehicles. We're still doing all of this stuff. So I think we've made it through this piece of it. Um, the chip shortage, that's presenting quite the challenge. I mean, it's, it's a new challenge for us, right? And having to think about things because we're really excited that people are so excited for our vehicles like Bronco, like Maverick, like Lightning, right? And now we're having trouble getting them out there. So it's a new challenge to manage the weight. Right. Um, I would say it's put a little strain on some of the marketing budgets, right? So, yep. but maybe that's also good because then you are even more careful and choosy about what you do, right? It forces you to be efficient and to prioritize. Absolutely. But still, we're still moving forward in gaming. We're still activating, right? We know that that's longer term and we don't want to drop the short term. Oh, right. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I'll, I'll ask another question that came in from the audience. Um, what product or brand have you worked on that you feel was the most innovative um, at that time and why I'm not sure what time, but let's just go in, in terms of the activations that you've worked on, um, you know, which is product or brand have you worked on that you feel is most innovative? Uh, I can... I don't, this person, if you want to say like, if this is in gaming space or just in <laughs> yeah, we, marketing, we, but yeah, I'm going to answer yeah, first well. and you can add a note, but okay. personally, I think the Maverick, I'm really excited and I've known about Maverick for a while and haven't been able to talk about it, but I think that it's really addressing some unmet needs for customers. I think it's, I don't know it's really creative in different ways. If you're mm. not familiar with it, there's um, the trunk is called flex bed and theoretically it's basically built. So you can just drop plywood in there and kind of build out different racks or anything else in the bed. It has attachment points. So you can 3d print your own accessories for inside the vehicle. And I just think these are more innovative things that are cultural also the value, it's a really good value with high technology, good gas mileage, really high practicality. So I just think it's. Yeah, there's something creative about it. Yeah, it's fun. It's a, yeah. it's a unique vehicle. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, marketing, um, you know, and, and how you measure that success, specifically, obviously, for gaming and, and esports, you know, moving from digital to, to real world, you know, how, what, are you, what are you looking for as a, as a partner um, to measure if, if an activation was successful? Yeah, so I would say some of the measurement starts before you even start a partnership, right? So checking how, how big is the audience maybe for a given game or a given partner, right? Who is their audience? Where is their audience? Which regions and uh, what kind of demographics are we reaching? So kind of looking at that and then understanding after you go through this, who did you reach, right? And that's part of balancing our portfolio. So maybe in gaming or in this game, and I think I 
missed his name, but the AB and Bev person before me was talking about that portfolio, right? You're not going to hit everybody with one game. So hitting the different cohorts with maybe different either games or partners or um, esports teams, et cetera, right? Um, so, so audience, and then also looking at, so scale, like how, how big was it after we did that? The, if it's a big enough integration, we will run a brand lift study mm -hmm. and figure out, you know, did we actually move the needle on how people feel right. about Ford Motor Company as a brand? And I mean, we're, I'm lucky enough to work for a brand that's really well established so people know Ford, right? Especially right. in North America, we're pretty well established. It's not a recognition thing, but consideration. Is that a brand for me? So I would say that's an important one that we move the needle on. We also do some media, like advertising slots with this. So we measure that with our traditional media tools. Ford has a pretty powerful and well-developed, you know, media machine and measuring and tagging and lots of statistics, right? Yeah. And then we can, you know, look at how that performed within gaming benchmarks, but also across other things that Ford does. And one thing that we do in my team is because we work with integrations, we'll also look at brand lift. So how much better did that ad perform because it was run during a sponsored event. Right. Like, and so yeah, also, do, you, do you do the same type of measurements then in traditional? Like, or are there any yep. nuances to the two? Yeah. I mean, gaming stuff, it tends to be like Twitch and YouTube and social channels, right? So we don't, we haven't run anything on TV, whereas like NFL is probably TV plus NF, uh, YouTube and other channels, right? Right. So you're measuring different places, but you should still have a benchmark of how would that perform. So you don't directly compare their performance, but the lift, right? Like how yeah. much extra did you get for it? And looking at efficiency, um, although again, apples and oranges, but trying to understand how successful different integrations are and maybe which, what are the strengths and weaknesses of different integrations? And, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm just going to throw it out there, but you've seen some great positive results from the gaming and esports space. <laughs> Come on, it's, Sarah. Yes. I Like I said, I can't take really a whole lot of credit because a lot of that was set up before I stepped in. <laughs> but yes, it's been great. We were very happy with the results. I think our nice. partner was also happy with the results, which is important to us, right? And the fans. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, you know, activating, obviously, we talked a little bit about the creator, you know, uh, the influencers, the esports teams. How do you go about vetting, you know, what challenges do you see in, in, in working with those partners, right? Are they, are they, you know, is there a little bit more process that you want to go through than you would traditionally? And say traditionally compared to compared to like you know tradition if you were sponsoring like the nfl or the derby right i mean there's obviously there's some brand safety on, on what you're watching on the derby um yeah but you know with with creators and esports is there any more vetting that, that ford needs to be be considerate of i don't think there's any more i think that maybe i mean pro athletes could do their own things too right <laughs> um I don't think that there's more. I would say that we apply like a similar amount of vetting. The thing that's maybe a little bit different is it tends to be groups of creators, right? So then how do you think about it as like individual? One area that I work with is influencers and ambassadors. And then we might work with one influencer, right? Per, I mean, each influencer. And you look at that influencer alone. But then there's like these teams of esports and influencers, et cetera, all rolled together. So understanding how do they work together? How do they work individually, right? Because it's kind of this together, but still individuals. And that's what gives it strength too, is each of those creators brings their own thing to the table, right? So just kind right. of working, I wouldn't say it's complexity, but all yeah. of that, right? And, and obviously, again, I, I guess we would have to align to not only the brand, but I would assume the company's mission and value statement, right? In terms correct. of, you know, how you want to be perceived in market. Yes. Yep. Both from a gaming standpoint, right? The creator, yep. the game, right? The audiences that you want to connect with. 
is that is that leading leading down the path too much <laughs> um no, it's, it's all correct i mean the other who do we want to connect with right i mean yeah. and like i said how do we get the sense from the creators of the team or the esports that they can authentically integrate with the ford brand and the ford products right um i know you've only been in the space for a couple months like myself um but jumping in here were there any you know things you know that you see that you know obviously on a positive statement on a positive side that you really love or you know areas of improvement uh in the gaming and esports space i would say i i really enjoy kind of the layers of it right so with these game launches and different things happening there's kind of a big build up and understanding how to layer all the pieces together um like you know launch plans and key art and just all the pieces right it's not just like at the end there's a video game which i'm sure that's kind of like car manufacturing right people don't probably don't understand how complex that is either until you touch it um but just it's been really fun to see how it comes to life how partnerships come to life um challenges is i would say learning the space some things and maybe this is a little bit like on my personal thing, but understanding diversity in the space tends to skew a little bit male. Yeah. Strongly, there are some <laughs> games so that skew female, but especially one of the categories that comes to mind is like casual mobile gaming, right? But that's not really a great space for a brand to play in. Right. There's not a good way for us to integrate in a in an authentic and fun kind of way like you can in a Rocket League or I don't know any other game out there. Yeah, diversity is is, is, is certainly a big issue for the industry um, um, and, and something that we're addressing, you know, pretty heavily. In fact, I think my, my colleague Christina is, is talking about it at about 2.30 or 2.35 today. Um, but we're, we're taking a really big stance because again, going back to our mission of obviously empowering all creators, anybody um, to be able to do this type of content. Um, you know, we, we've created a fund um, that, you know, obviously puts money towards it. But I think, you know, looking at some of the statistics, is, it's pretty eye-opening in terms of where the industry needs to move um and again you know i think you know the building that awareness um you know and making sure that everyone has a voice you know is, is truly important to continue to grow um i guess in terms of um you know other areas for um you know for ford right looking ahead you know what are other areas uh in the space that you can think of i think you touched on it just now a little bit in terms of mobile gaming um but obviously you've got pc you got console you got mobile and and and, and where does ford go from here right what, what's the future look like right so it seems as i by the time i've jumped into gaming pc and consoles almost merged into a single category, right? Most of the games that you can play on PC, you can play on console and vice versa. So it's almost kind of like PC console and then mobile gaming. And so far we haven't dabbled too much in mobile gaming. So that's definitely, I would say, kind of an area that has a hole. Um, we have dabbled a little bit on the esports, but probably a little bit more there. And then always working to develop kind of the next up on the partnerships. The really nice part or since Rocket League was pretty successful so far. And I think also because our partner's happy, it's not like it was just happy for us. That's helped to open some doors and open some conversations. So we're excited also about that, right? We're happy that our strategy to add value seems to be getting the response that we were hoping for um, in that area. And then also looking a little bit, still keeping regional flavors, right? But how could we also build any global beats or take some of those partnerships and maybe build a little bit globally too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, two more questions from the audience. Um, do you have any advice for brands marketers who are looking to make their first foray into esports? Sure, I would say look for, well, think, think about how you want to go about it, what your goals might be. So going with the publisher kind of route, you get to go really deep into one game. 
And so you might gain more credibility with that audience. However, if you go kind of the esports influencer channel, you might reach a broader audience without committing to a single publisher. Um, then there's kind of what fits authentically with your brand. How can you play? Right. Um, obviously, I think I said it probably a whole bunch of times to <laughs> add value and yeah, not just logo slapping. Um, also, we think you get more out of that approach rather than you might put more dollars in for the logo slap if you just do that and that's it. Um, and also consider what resources you have to partner, right? Different partners might require more or less relationship with the brand. So if you don't have as many resources to maybe work with somebody, think about that too and consider sure. that in your relationships. Some of them are more, I would say Ford tends to be a high touch partner, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way in different working with it, they've, people have said, you know, it could be more high touch or it could be a little bit more hands-off depending what they're comfortable with and what resources they want to apply to it. Gotcha. Um, okay, we have one more. Um, is the investment in esports at Ford additive to the traditional professional sports sponsorships or is it the same budget shifting from one to the other? I would say it's additive. <laughs> I think this is a little bit, those were established probably before I came, but I think it's additive, right? Nobody said, hey, we canceled this other partnership and that's why we were able to get into gaming. We didn't reshuffle the budget like that. It was more on the order of, this is an area where we want to play. We think it's important for us to be in this space and we're going to organize the resources, both financial and people to support that. Nice, right, okay, fantastic. I love that approach. Excuse me. I love that that <laughs> approach and that mentality. I love the career change. I mean, like so inspiring, right? Like, you know, like we talk about, you know, during the pandemic, I've seen a lot of people talk about like, hey, over the last year, it's really made me think and uh, about like what I'm doing and what I want to do. And I think, you know, just just knowing that, I mean, you can pick up, you said you were an engineer and just yeah. kind of, right? Just now I'm gonna go work at Ford and, and lead gaming and esports. I love it. And, and it is, it's an exciting new category with so much opportunity. At